chair. I'm going to pull myself forward and just work on holding that straight vertical spine with my muscles rather than the chair back. I'd like you to go ahead and rest your palms on your thighs. Draw your shoulders out of your ear, <clears throat> excuse me, your ears and broaden across your collarbone. Go ahead and close your eyes and start to breathe slowly in through the nose and out through the nose. Keep those eyes closed for a few moments while you slow down and connect with your breath. I like to begin each practice with a slow focus on the breath because I feel like it helps us transition from whatever we were doing into the space with a deeper level of connection. It's something that we're all doing together and it helps us be here, right here, right now. While we continue to focus on the breath, notice where you may be holding tension. We all do it, I do it, you do it. We don't mean to do it, it's just something that happens. So the first thing we want to do is consciously say, where am I holding tension? So for me, I tend to linger with some tightness through my shoulders and neck, even into my face. I tend to have a real consistent light clenching in the jaw. So I have to let that go very mindfully. I also tend to have a lingering um, contraction in the quadricep muscles. Like I tend to tighten up through my legs. So right now I'm gonna start thinking about, okay, are those muscles contracted? Can I coach them to let go? I'm rubbing the tops of my thighs with my palms, just encouraging those muscles to soften. So let's blink the eyes open. I'll meet you right here in the middle and just start to dip the chin and rotate from side to side, passing through the middle without going back. I don't want you to go back behind. And so while we're here doing these neck rolls and these releases through the shoulders, I just want to say a little bit about um, mood follows action. So there's this idea that you have to be in the mood. Okay, well, I need to go exercise, but I'm not in the mood. And we think that sense of mood and motivation comes first, and then the action follows. But for many of us, and in many different situations, it's quite the reverse. Action comes first, mood comes second. That's where we find that we commit to being here, and here we are again, it's June, and we're sitting in our chairs, taking a chair yoga practice, that's a choice. It's a, it's a specific action choice to commit to this. Holding right here on the right, press the opposite hand away. And then what you find is that the mood is uplifted following the practice. So the choice to physically practice the action. And then all of a sudden the mood is better. And that becomes a self-fulfilling cycle. Find that length in the side of the neck, press the head, front of the head and the palm away. So the idea of mood follows action and just acknowledging it goes both ways. Sometimes we need to be in the right mood to propel us out the door. And then sometimes we make the choice to leave the door to find the right mood. Let's roll around to the other side. Research is bearing out that 
those of us that can stay committed to our gym routines, our exercise routines, our choice to go to church on a Sunday morning, whatever that behavior is, what we're finding is that the more disciplined you are in the action, the action is most important. And then all of the benefits follow. Let's release, roll through the center and we'll lift the head, stacking the neck directly over the spine. We'll breathe the arms high overhead. Prayer hands draw through the midline, passing the third eye to the heart center. We'll pause right here for our intention. So closing the eyes. Perhaps you'd like to dedicate your practice this morning to someone or something that you love. Perhaps you'd like to dedicate your practice to a release that you specifically want. Okay, today I'm feeling very tight in my hips. I'm gonna really work on loosening up my hips. Find your intention. Setting that intention brings a greater experience for you. And it, I do believe in sending positive energy out into the universe. So we'll seal our intention with a collective deep breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, excuse me, out through the nose. Okay, blinking the eyes open, we'll start with our cat cow. You can rest your hands onto your thighs. You can cup your knees. You can grab onto the side of your chair, whatever works for you. We'll start with cow pose. So dropping the belly, rolling the shoulders back, tipping the tailbone like a deer in flight, and then taking the reverse. So we tuck everything to the midline and we spread the vertebrae in the back. Let's do that again. Cow pose, popping the heart through. Literally squeeze the shoulder blades in the back. Use the arms to help you lever yourself more. And then reverse it. So I feel like cat pose is the inhale. Spine high, breathe in. And then let it go. So you can probably tell from my voice that I literally just woke up, right? So this is a beautiful stretch for when you just wake up in the morning. Take it at your own pace. Looks like Virginia has her sunglasses on her head. Somebody has their sunglasses on their head. <laughs> yeah, let's do two more and just make that feel really delicious and nurturing to your spine. So I'm gonna take one more. I'm gonna ask you all to hold your cat pose. So let's hold the cat pose, pulling the spine high, tucking the belly button into the spine. Anchor down in the push point of the bottom. So get your seat anchored. And I want you to really pull and ask for more extension, I mean, excuse me, flexion. So this is flexion. Whenever you forward bend with your spine, it's flexion. I want you to exaggerate that and get more release. Open the shoulder blades. So literally pull your shoulder blades open, contract through your chest. Get a long, long, long stretch. You're creating space in your spine. Now let's do the reverse. So we'll take cow pose and we'll hold. Everything is opposite. So you're now squeezing the shoulder blades, consciously opening through the chest, getting, this is called um, extension. Hold there in your chair, work your cow pose. Anytime we take the back back, this is extension. 
This is flexion. So right now we're in extension. Belly button, pulling this way, spine. Get a beautiful arch in that back. That mobility in the spine is super important for our long-term health. Okay, let's release and come to a neutral position, please. A couple of gentle twists to get started. We'll inhale the arms high overhead. I have like a wall here, so if you see my arm over here do something quirky, it's just that I'm missing the wall. Okay, so that's not part of what we're doing. Inhale, arms overhead, hold here. So palms together. If you like, you can interlace your fingers and release your index fingers or not. When I take my hands in this position, I tend to hike my shoulders up. So you wanna set the shoulders into their sockets, yes. So anytime we take a twist or a side bend, we wanna find length first. So breathe in to create a long spine and lift, 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 lift. Exhale and side bend. Curve yourself over. And as you go there, take this top shoulder, roll it open. Even peek your gaze, brush your gaze by your bicep. Let's take another breath in. On the exhale, find more depth. Now notice. Anchor your feet down. Push the soles of the feet into the floor. Anchor both sit bones down. Push them into the chair. Those are your push points to find a deeper stretch. We'll release down. We'll sweep through the middle and take a gentle forward fold. So you're gonna drape your chest over your legs, bow your head, look through your knees behind you. Soften your neck. So what I'm trying to get you to do, you just hold your forward fold there. What I'm trying to get you to do is create more length and more side bend. We want to push the edges of that mobility because that's really healthy and good for us. So we're going to use the breath and anchor down the soles of the feet and the sit bones to find more bend. It's a really interesting contrast of anchoring down to find length. All right, so let's just gently roll up, arms by the side. You're in your seated position. This would be our standing mountain pose. And if you are choosing to stand, you can do this in standing. You would be in mountain pose. Inhale, arms over high. Exhale, set. So intentionally roll the shoulders back into their sockets. Let's anchor down first. So push, feel the soles of your feet into the floor. Push, feel your sit bones into the chair. Anchor down, breathe in, extending long. Breathe out and curve yourself over to the other side. Take that top shoulder, roll it back. Peek over that bicep. Now take another breath in. Anchor down, find more side bend. So literally hold your hands. I'm gonna talk with my hands. Push, push, push the waist, push. One more breath. Release the bottom arm. Sweep through the middle, drape the body over the thighs. Take your forward fold, look for your knees behind you. So mood follows action. You are probably already starting to feel better. So let's tick tock just very gently, do, 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 do the spine up. So taking your time, one vertebrae, stack, shoulders, neck, head. So I was trying to tell a friend of mine why I like this class so much. And she was like, but it's chair yoga. I'm like, ah, it's stretching and meditation, right? It's just stretching and meditation. And that's so healthy for us. We'll inhale the arms overhead. Exhale and forward fold. So arms wide, drape the chest, look down behind you. 
Now take your hands to your shins and we're gonna lever that spine out at like a 45 degree angle. So this is your flat back extend. You stay where you are. I am like this, so it's not here. Lengthen the spine out because we're sitting in the chair. If you're standing, you're gonna be like this. Let's fold again and we'll roll all the way to the top. Extended mountain. Exhale and fold. Inhale to your flat back. Pry the spine long, peak up. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, rise. Exhale. Inhale to your long spine, offering the heart. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold. Offering the heart, lengthening the spine. Folding again. This time we're gonna rise to the top and take a twist to the right. So open the arms, twist to the right. So in this twist, you've got your left hand outside of the knee and we use this arm to push, push through. The back hand, I've got mine against the chair and I'm pushing that arm into the chair. So what we're doing is we're intentionally taking our spine and wringing it. You wanna complete your twist by looking back over your shoulder. That will create a deeper twist. Now notice, has your left hip rolled off the chair? Put it down. Let's take one more breath. And out. We'll inhale, arms high overhead. And twist the other way. So place the back of the hand outside of the knee. Place the arm against the chair. And use that pressure to open. Hold there in your twist. I'm going to look into the camera and talk to you. So this is uh, the idea of opposing forces. Your arms are pushing back. Your torso is pushing forward. Feel those opposite forces and use them to twist and bring a deeper mobility to your spine. Take a breath in, peek over your shoulder, literally find the wall behind you. One more breath. And out. Inhale the arms high overhead. Prayer hands through the third eye, the seat of intuition to the heart center, the anahata. Hold there. Let's revisit your intention for just a moment, acknowledging that sense of higher purpose that brings deep meaning to your work this morning. Right, we'll take another sun salutations, release the arms by the side, inhale high. Exhale and fold, take your time. Inhale, offer your heart. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms high overhead. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, arms high overhead. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, arms high. Prayer hands through the heart center and pull. Take your right leg, lift that up. You're going to place the um, ankle area on top of your thigh. If this is not available for you today, you cross at your ankle on the floor and that's fine. This is a modified version. Back to that idea of opposing forces. So my right hand will push down, my right, my left arm will pull up. 
opposing forces work into that hip. So we need to do this with intention. And then we also want to come back and notice our core. So we don't want to slouch. We want to be lifted and strong and proud. Anchor down with the sit bones, lengthen the spine. Stack, stack, stack. Lengthen the neck, crown of the head. Now let's work. Work into that hip. Apply the pressure. So really important to work into the hip joints. We hold a lot of stress and tension in our hip joints, and we want to actively choose to break up that stress and tension. Okay, so holding here, you release your heart, your arms by your side, inhale up overhead, and now we're gonna fold over that leg. So you're going to drape over, arms over and ouch, right? You feel that in your hip. What happens is we start to lift our bottom off the mat because it's uncomfortable. Excuse me, we lift our bottom off the chair because it's uncomfortable. So I remind you, anchor down and breathe through that discomfort. See if you can get your chest a little bit closer to your leg. Take a breath in. Use the exhale to guide you closed. Oh man. So this is like 100% bittersweet. Hurt so good. One more breath and get that chest closer to the leg. Exhale, more. Okay, let's return to seated. Keep yourself there. So I'm gonna ask you just to stay right here and continue to work like this, or I'm gonna get you to lean back in your chair and use your bottom leg to push. You can pull through here. Oh man, just notice how that changes the stretch. Flex your uh, foot of your right leg, flex the foot of your right leg. That will stabilize your knee. Oh dear gracious. And release. So we'll go right into the other side, lifting the other leg up. So you can see, if you look in the picture, look at this side, so different from me for the other. I'm right-handed, this is my right side. You can see that that tightness is there in my hip. All right, so here we go. We start asking for the mobility. Pressing and pulling, pulling and pressing. So I wanna just talk to you for a second, so I'm gonna unmute you for a moment. All right, so tell me that y'all felt that stretch in your hip. Whoa. <laughs> oh, man, right? Yeah. yeah. It's so good when you stop. I know, but you, so um, one of the biggest things that we need to do is really work out that tension in our hips so that we don't lose our mobility for sitting, standing, walking. So really use your breath to push through and use it to guide you. There's a difference, we meaning there's a difference between pain and tightness, right? So work through the tightness, stop when you feel pain. Good, are we good? All right, I'm gonna go back to mute. Hi, Carrie. So remember that you want to flex this foot. It stabilizes your knee joint. And if you do have any twinges of pain, if you flex this, what this does is turn on all the tendons and ligaments and connective tissue, stabilizes your knee joint. You may find that that solves any issues with pain. And you may find that it doesn't, and then you back off. All right, so let's breathe the arms over head and we'll take our fold, breathing high. Exhale, drape. So with softness first, drape over. I've got both arms over. Oh dear, right? 
So anchor down, weight down, let your body weight set into the chair. So sometimes the best stretches, the best twists, the best folds come from softness, actually. Softening our expectations. So notice where you're contracting muscles. See if you can let them go. Notice if you're tightening in your face or your shoulders, let it go. Take a deep breath in. On the exhale, fold more deeply. Bring that chest closer to the thigh. We're going to be here for two more breaths at least. All right, so we'll ride the breath up to Steven. We'll release and take that down. Uh, so let's just real quickly while we're here, roll the wrists, please. You wanna um, flex and bend, flex and extend both sides. Roll around in both directions. Maybe pull and hold for a moment and then bend and really work the fingertips towards the forearms. And then fingers. I like to pump. Lots of muscles in our hands and fingers. All right, so um, hands together, fingers together. We'll do that little drill. <laughs> so I find it to be so hard where you pull each finger over one at a time, okay? So really what, not only is this good for the little digits in our fingers, but also it's about the connection of the mind to the body. Okay, so pinkies. Green fingers, middle fingers. <laughs> so I can't do it on that side. And index fingers. <laughs> All right, so returning index fingers, middle fingers, ring fingers, pinkies. Let's do that one more time. I want to look at you guys. <laughs> I'm going to put you on gallery view because I want to see if y'all have as hard time with that as I do. Okay, ready? <laughs> Here we go. Hi, Linda. Hi. Okay, ready? Thank you, fingers. <laughs> Ring fingers. Uh, middle fingers. index fingers. I'm doing better this time. <laughs> index fingers, middle fingers, ring fingers, pinky fingers. Did you guys do better the second time? Yes. Yes. All right, so go to your feet, start rolling your ankles. So we can let go of the wrists um, and fingers, start rolling your um, ankles, please. Okay, so roll your ankles in all directions, play around with that. I'm gonna mute you again. Uh, let me get where you can see me. All right, so you can do both at the same time or not. You can do one at a time also. So there was a point in time when I knew how many muscles and bones there are in our feet. It's, it's a much larger number than we realize. Lots of muscles in our feet. So we wanna think about that.
So I'd like you to take um, your uh, feet and point them like a point dancer. So if you're doing one, we'll, we'll trade out. If you're doing one at a time, that's fine. But feel that stretch across the top of your foot right there. Point, actively point, feel the muscles contracting. Let's do the other one. And then let's do the reverse, so now we'll flex. And when you flex, sometimes you can see this little muscle, this is your tibialis anterior, you feel it, you can, I can literally see that muscle contracting. You can probably even see it on the camera, right there. Switch. Heels down now, um, wiggle your toes. So pump your toes just like you did your fingers. And then just try to separate your toes. See if you can separate your toes together. Here are here, mine together, and then pull your toes apart. the other side. Okay, we're going to move into standing. Um, if you prefer to stay in a chair, you can do anything that we do in standing, you are welcome to do in the chair. I'll be in and out helping you with that. Um, as an example, but if you can stand, I'd like, I prefer that you stand, and if you're worried about your balance, just stay close to your chair and keep a hand on the chair. So we'll stand up. Alongside your chair, I would like to first, since we just did a little bit of a focus on the feet. Um, okay, so when we, if you stand here and like you lock out your knees and you just sink your weight down, this is called resting on your bones. You're actually not really doing any work. You just stacked your bones and you're resting on them like a support beam. So rather than resting on your bones, be strong and lifted. So it's a real micro bend in the knees, but rather we're using the muscles to hold us upright. Holding onto your chair for balance or not, I want you to just lift up onto the balls of your feet and then slowly roll down. So we're not gonna go up, plop. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna roll up and roll down, taking your time, taking your time to roll up, find the balls of the feet, push the balls of the feet, get the heels as high as you possibly can, and then slowly roll down with control. You can even rock back a little bit if you like. Roll up, feel your calf muscles contract, roll down. Roll up, roll down. One more. and roll down. So now what I want you to do is we're going to roll up onto the balls of our feet and we're going to stay. So roll up. You're on the balls of your feet. This will be a balance challenge. If you want to hang on to the chair, that's fine. If you can, see if you can bring your prayer hands to your heart center. Keep your heels lifted and start to bend your knees, but don't hinge at the waist. So slide your back down the wall, bend your knees, balance on the balls of your feet. How low can you go? So much strength, hold. Three, two, slowly up, slowly up. Hit the top and release. So I'm gonna turn side on so you can see me and we'll do that again. I'm trying to get where you can see me. Okay, here we go. Roll up onto the balls of your feet, pause. So 
and we're lifted on the balls of our feet. Heels are off the mat, now pull them higher. You know, start to bend your knees, but slide your back straight down. Don't bend at the waist. This is called awkward pose. Hold. It is awkward, isn't it? And slowly release. So come up slowly with control and release. So any type of balance work is deep muscle strength work. We're gonna do that again, but you're gonna see if you can take your hands out front of you. This changes your balancing situation. Now, if you don't care for this at all, you can do the same thing. You can rise up and down while seated in the chair. This is absolutely fine. All right, here we go. We're gonna do two more awkward poses. We're gonna change the whole idea of our balance by sending our arms out in front of us. Roll up onto the balls of your feet, hold. Start to bend your knees. Slide down. Take your time, make sure your spine is vertical. Hold at the bottom. And then start to ride the breath up. So breathe, lift. Find the top and let it go. So not easy, so much strength. One more time. Heels lift. Start to bend the knees, slide the back. Hit your depth, whatever that is, pause. And then right up and let it go. Shake it out. Okay, alongside your chair, extend the arm out, the leg out to the side, arm overhead. So we've got a diagonal line. Now take your standing knee, your left knee, and bend it so you're sinking down. Now with a long lever first, I want you to rise up, lift the leg, and down, bend the knee. Rise up, lift the leg, and down, bend the knee. Take your time. We're not in a race. This is not a competition. I just want you to feel your core right there, your core, and down. So do maybe four more. If you need to soften your knee, you can bend your knee, that's okay. But work on that long, arm and the long leg, okay? I'm gonna do one more. And hold, you can come to the middle, shake it out. So same side. Same side. If you want to be behind your chair to hold on, we're going to be on the same side. We're just going to change a little bit. You're going to take your warrior two pose. So you've got your left toes pointing at the side wall. The right toes are forward. The left knee is bent. The right leg is long. Push that knee towards the second and third toe. Just kind of push for a second and come back. Push for a second and come back. Now in the chair, you can take warrior two in the chair. That's absolutely fine. Warrior two in the chair. Your thigh bone is on the chair seat, okay? So you can absolutely do warrior two in the chair. All right, so now hold your warrior two. A lot of times when we're in warrior two, we like bend or we slouch. I want you to think about centering up your body between your hips. So put your hands on your hips and center yourself up. Now drop down. So don't fall over, drop down. So your tailbone is heavy. Lightly tuck that tailbone. Keep your whole torso between your hips. Sink down. You can feel that right there, yes? Wrap your muscles around your spine, lift. Yep. Now you can take your arms out if you like. 
So we're gonna do a very gentle flow. We're just gonna rise up, straightening the legs. Straight down, don't lean. Inhale. Exhale. Feel the ribs off the hips, inhale. Exhale. Twice more. Inhale. Exhale. And release. So we'll walk our way around to the other side. I have to move my chair all the way over here so I have room. <laughs> Take your left leg long. Your right knee, again, we're not going to use it like a stilt. Not a stilt. Bend the knee, soften the knee, sink down into your right knee. Send the arm overhead. So you guys, we're looking to close this space right here in your side body and your obliques. Feel that contraction, arm overhead. We lift and squeeze and lower. Now you can do this seated in the chair. You might not lift as high. You might bend your knee. Wherever you are, I want you to feel this contraction right here. Squeeze it, lengthen it. Let's do maybe four more. And four. Okay, so warrior two on the other side. This time your left toes are pointing towards your device. Your right toes are turned toward the side wall. So like this. Start to drop down into your legs. We don't want to lean. I want you to center up. Core is raised. Set the spine. So you actually lightly tuck the tailbone straight down towards the floor. It's a sense of a plumb line. Wrap the shoulders back. Let's flow. Keep going. Twice more. And release. So while you're in standing, let's do one um, baby back bend and standing. If you're going to stay in a chair, you're going to definitely scoot your hips towards the front of the chair. Rest here with your hands in your back pocket. So for all the rest of us that are standing, we're gonna take our hands in the same place. Now we will manually push the hips. So the palms are manually pushing the hips forward. You're flowing back, soften your knees, broaden across the chest, wrap the shoulders back, take a breath in. I strongly encourage you to find your edge here. How low can you go? You're, you're in a limbo game. Get under that limbo bar. We'll hold for one more breath. I know it's uncomfortable. Tuck your chin, rise yourself out. All right, we'll have a seat. We'll finish with a release for the shoulders and the chest and the back. Starting with your back wings. So we'll draw those circles. And 
All right, so notice your shoulder blades. When you roll back, they squeeze together. When you roll forward, they open. Squeeze the blades, open the blades. Now, same movement pattern, but think about your chest. Open, close, chest. Open, close. And switch directions. Feels good. And release. Okay, so from the edge of your chair, I want you to take your hands and lightly clasp them behind you. Notice which thumb is on top. So my initial inclination as I go to my left thumb is on top of my right. I just want you to notice because we are going to trade it out. Bring your chest forward over your thighs and start to lift your hands up behind you. So the hands are lifting away from the waist. Surrender your head, so let your head be heavy. Work into that shoulder stretch. Okay, let's release that, roll up. We're gonna do the same thing, but I need you to cross your hands in the opposite direction. It creates a different feel on the stretch. So I'm gonna reach around and I have to think about it. I'm gonna get my right thumb on top this time. My fingers are interlaced. This is awkward for me. This is not my natural position where I would go. So I'm embracing the idea, okay, it's supposed to feel awkward and it does. Start to drape the chest forward. Lift the hands away from the, hip, the hips. So arms go up in the air. Oh man, this is hard. And release. So that second round, <laughs> the less comfortable version was really hard. I had to work my shoulders to get them to get up over that hump so I could lift. It took work, but I got there. Okay, so just a little bit of work for the core. I'm gonna work in the chair. It's absolutely fine, fine to work in the chair. I do want to set an intention on this first. So you're using your core muscles to move your legs. You're activating your core to move your legs, to move the torso. So rather than thinking about um, a quad lift, think about a core pull. Alternate your legs, lift them off the floor but use the core, engage the core, lift from the core to pull the legs up. When I focus on it and think about using the core to initiate the movement, I can feel it. You guys keep going. I feel like my daughter missed an appointment. I'm not at home. Oh, forget it. Something else. Okay, now if you like, you can lean back into your chair and float your legs. So you can lift up 
and down. That's one option. It's hard. You can bicycle. You can lift one leg and the other leg. You just play around and work that core a little bit. I'm gonna unmute you because we're gonna be finishing up here in just a moment. So some of you have locked yourself on mute and that's fine. I'm just letting you know, Linda, Fred, and Carrie, you're locked on mute, that's okay. Ah, uh, there you go. Hi. Yeah, so just you guys, whatever you're doing, it's one leg at a time. Maybe you'll do a couple of reps of both legs. Oh, man, that's hard. Try that. Try both legs. No joke. But muscles in the core, core. Do that for, you know, 30 more seconds. So I miss when we're on Zoom. I miss the dialogue of the back and forth. I like that interaction. I've got you um, off mute if you feel like saying hi. Hi. Um, left. I'm going to do two more. Uh, okay. All right. So let's come to a comfortable seat. Come back to your intention. Revisit the place from where you started. Mood follows action. So, how are you feeling? Is your mood better? Feeling better? Let's take four slow breaths together in and out. In. We will draw to a close here. First of all, I thank you for choosing to be here in this group this morning. Being together is an honor and a privilege. The light and spirit in me acknowledges and honors the light and spirit in each of you. Namaste. Namaste.